So originally I was going to do a This Day in History to celebrate the 18th anniversary of Transformers Robots in Disguise, also known as Car Robots in Japan, as September 8th was the first episode airing of Battle Protocol, episode one on Fox Kids. But in recent news, there was two people that passed away, unfortunately, in re- that were heavily related to Transformers, Robots in Disguise, and a whole bunch of other Fox Kids-related programming, and then some. And I figured I'd kind of push aside the celebration of Robots in Disguise and how it kind of moved Transformers in a new direction, and instead talked about these two legendary voice actors that uh, both of them had a lot of stuff that was related to stuff that I love, and uh, just to kind of celebrate them. Uh, the first one that passed away uh, was, and this happened over just the past week, so it's quite a whammy. Um, Michael Lindsay passed away August 31st, 2019, at the young age of 56. Um, cause of death has not been issued right now. If someone knows something, please leave it in the comments. I'm kind of curious myself, because whenever stuff like that happens, it always makes me worry. <laughs> uh Michael in Transformers, uh, again, like I mentioned from a car robots, robots in the sky standpoint, was known for being Skid Z, uh, or Skids, depending how you want to pronounce it, uh, who was known as Indie Heat in the Japanese version. He was the Formula One car who was obsessed with racing, and I loved that character. Uh, and he was also Rollbar, one of the uh, combiner pieces for Bruticus, or Ruination, however you want to call it. Uh, from the uh, Decepticon side and those were two lesser characters but what he's better known for that uh, a lot of people could relate to and this is where it really hits for a lot of people was if you were a big fan of Digimon uh, which was also a big Fox Kids property during the late 90s early 2000s he was Joe Kaido uh, the nerdy kid um, the nerdy kid from the crew of the Digi Destin and he was even more so well known for being the voice of Greymon, the second form of Agumon in uh, Digimon. The more uh, T-Rex with the skull mask kind of thing going on. And the one that also kind of sucks that really hits me is that um, he was the dub voice of Amuro Ray for the first three movies of the original, let's call it 0079 Gundam series. And... While I always, you know, say, hey, you should always watch the original subtitled versions and stuff. When I was trying to get a lot of people into Gundam and the people that I was trying to get into Gundam, they weren't subtitle watching kind of people. I would always go to watch the dub versions of Gundam to make sure that the dubbing wasn't too bad. And I found that Bandai in the early 2000s was really knocking it out of the park with their dubbing department. They did some really good work. Even the 0083 dub. Uh, is really good. I was very surprised how well done it was. And uh, Michael Lindsay was Amaro Ray. He was the main character of those three movies. And I was very impressed with his depiction of Amaro Ray. And so it's it's a shame to see that guy that I kind of used as my way to sell people on Gundam, especially 0079 uh, Mobile Suit Gundam. You know, I had to use his voice to kind of sell it to people. So it's kind of a shame. Again, age 56, that's that's way too young. And then we have the king. And this guy, too much stuff to name. Um, Robert Axelrod. I love his last name. Robert Axelrod. This dude is a legend in voice acting. Uh, he started voice acting in 1976 uh, when he started working on Smurfs where he was Brainy Smurf in the, obviously, the English version of the 1983 movie. And, man, like, he is just all over the place in terms of anime and that Fox Kids lineup. Um, You know, like, in terms of stuff that relates to me, that really matter to me. Um, Well, we'll go to the Transformer side. So, in Transformers, he was just Muvor. He was, again, one of those combiner pieces of, of the Bruticus Ruination team. And that was pretty much it from the Transformer side. But what was he from everything else? Well, let's let's go with the Fox Kids stuff. So he was Lord Zed from Power Rangers, which, I mean, everyone could hear that voice in their head right now. The main villain of season two going onward. 
of Power Rangers and would be a mainstay for a very long time and would still be making cameos here and there to that day and doing the convention, you know, scene and going to Power Morphicon. He was also Finster. Again, you could hear that voice in your head, the guy who made all the Putty Patrol and all of Rita's crew. Um, from the anime side of dubbing, we could go to like classic anime first. Like he was in Lensman. I love Lensman. A lot of people aren't familiar with Lensman, but Lensman was based off of an old uh, science fiction novel from a very long time ago. We're talking like the 20s. And so they did an anime years later, and he was the dub in Lensman. He was Soul. Uh, Akira. I mean, what more could be said about Akira? Akira, the legendary anime that pretty much was, you know, for many people, their, their cherry popper for, for adult anime. Uh, he was Shima Kazaki in the English dub version. And, of course, when we go to the likes of uh, Digimon again, again, they also, he also worked on Digimon, uh, he was Wizardmon, which was easily one of my favorite characters in that original Digimon series. Uh, so he was Wizardmon, which, man, like, I loved Wizardmon, so that really sucks that, uh, you know, he passed away. And, of course, he was ar also Armadillo Mon in Season 2 of Digimon 2 and stuff like that, moving on to the way. And he was a bunch of other characters, too, but those were the two main ones. But I think that the thing that he did most, out of all this stuff, out of all this stuff, I think the thing that he did most that was the most important was, and I only learned this after he passed away, because I saw it, you know, in the news he was the one in charge of adapting all 54 episodes of samurai pizza cats into english what that means is he was the guy who had to watch those episodes in japanese and write scripts based on what he was seeing on the screen because samurai pizza cats didn't get uh, the original uh, dubbing adapters didn't get the original scripts from the japanese version so that is incredible because I love Samurai Pizza Cats. And for people who are big fans of the podcast and the stuff that me and Jaws D do together, uh, we did a whole like playthrough of the original Samurai Pizza Cats video game for the uh, old Nintendo Famicom. And we talked in length. If you want to <laughs> if you want to uh, hear me and Jaws D talk about Samurai Pizza Cats for like an hour and a half or something while playing Samurai Pizza Cats, uh, just go to the Gaming Well Wasted Proto Man Gaming channel. And it's on there somewhere. But so he he was in charge of the adaptation of all 54 episodes into English. That is crazy. So that really sucks. That hits me because it's like, man, that guy, I loved that show as a kid. And that to me, that was really one of my first true um, introductions to anime. Because like, yeah, you know, like I watched Speed Racer as a kid. But I, I, don't, I wasn't aware that it was anime. And, you know, and I watched Robotech as a kid. But I wasn't aware it was anime. But when I was watching Samurai Pizza Cats, I was like, there's something different about this show. The way that the animation was done and the, the, the facial expressions. And it was the first time I learned what Japanese anime was. And I mean, so it, it sucks, both of them. And again, he passed away at 70, which, you know, still is still is too young, in my opinion. But, man, that sucks. So that's this is the primary reason why I wanted to talk about this and why I'm going to delay the celebration of this day in history for robots in the skies because two of robots in the skies is dudes recently passed away so just want to celebrate those two let me know what you think about these two and and some of your favorite characters from them i know that also michael Lindsay did some naruto stuff and uh and robert axel did a whole bunch of other stuff too but those were the ones that i remember that really mattered to me so let me know what you think about these two and and memories that you have of their incredible voice work <laughs> 